The Housing Minister, Robert Jenrick, today claiming for the second day running that the government had reached its target of carrying out 100,000 coronavirus tests a day. Today's data shows that 1,129,907 tests for coronavirus have now been carried out in the United Kingdom, including 105,937 tests carried out yesterday. But were they? The government is accused of artificially inflating the numbers. A third of the tests carried out on the last day of April, close to 40,000, were home tests sent to households without any time scale for their completion. But beyond the numbers, there are worries about the efficiency of home testing. So this test is difficult to conduct because you really need to get the swab at the back of your throat, really at the back, and then scrape uh, uh, at the back of your throat. And similarly, you need to swab to go all the way horizontally back to the end of your nose and then scrape and get some cells from there. People are not going to do this properly because it's an uncomfortable test to do. Therefore, we can expect a lot of false negatives. False negatives is when a result comes back negative, but the person is in fact infected and infectious and unknowingly may spread the virus further. But even in a system where tests are more accurate, testing isn't enough. The UK also needs an expansive tracking and tracing program to deal with positive cases. The immediate actions are the case is removed from circulation immediately if they've already not been removed. And then uh, expert people interview this case and identify who their contacts may have been. And then we quickly, urgently, as a matter of grave urgency, find these contacts and also pull them out of circulation. The government's tracing program involves recruiting thousands and launching an app and its success may determine when current lockdown rules can be eased. Next week, Mr Johnson has promised to announce how he intends to revive the economy and reopen schools, covering new rules on travel to work and workplace safety. Measures reportedly being considered include the wearing of face masks in public and commuter temperature checks, widespread in other parts of the world. Today, the Prime Minister's fiance Carrie Simmons, posted a picture of their newborn baby, Wilfred Laurie Nicholas, the third name a tribute to two NHS doctors who treated Mr Johnson in hospital. A reminder of the NHS workers still on the front line of the fight against a virus, the outcome of which will ultimately determine any return to normality. Well, the NHS has begun trials to find out if using blood plasma from patients who've recovered from coronavirus could help treat people who've become critically ill. As scientists around the world scramble to find treatments, in the United States, the antiviral drug remdesivir, used to treat Ebola, has just been authorised for emergency use on COVID-19 patients. With the prospect of a vaccine still a long way away, could finding effective treatments come sooner? Kieran Moodley reports. In recent weeks, President Trump's COVID-19 advice has been controversial. He touted disinfectant and sunlight as possible treatments, later claiming he was being sarcastic. This time, the president had a more promising development. I'm pleased to announce that Gilead now has an EUA from the FDA for remdesivir. And you know what that is because that's been the hot thing also in the papers and in the media for the last little while. An important treatment for hospitalized coronavirus patients. Remdesivir was originally developed to treat Ebola, the deadly virus that struck West Africa between 2013 and 2016. A recent trial of more than a thousand hospitalized COVID-19 patients found the drug cut their recovery time from 15 days to 11. Gilead, the company that makes Redisivir, will now ramp up production, and Japan has said it will fast-track a review into the use of the drug. Yet there was caution that this is no magic bullet. The trial did not indicate whether it can reduce COVID-19's fatality. So it's good news, but I, I was very serious when I said, this is not the total answer by any means, but it's a very important first step. Treatment is a key focus in the battle against COVID-19 ahead of a possible vaccine. Here in the UK, trials 
led by NHS Blood and Transplant, have begun to see whether the blood plasma from survivors can treat critically ill hospital patients. Pilot studies from China showed positive signs regarding plasma treatment, but has yet to be tested in a randomized clinical trial. There is uncertainty uh, that this may or may not work. We all hope that it works and the treatment effects outweighs any other effect of this intervention. So yes, we are all, uh, we all should be hopeful because it is a known intervention with minimal side effects, but there is always a chance that this may not accelerate recovery. So far, more than 6,000 people who have recovered from COVID have signed up to be donors. We've got all these people in intensive care and, and if the antibodies in the plasma can make a difference, then we, sh we should all be you know, doing everything that we can and this is something that I can do, so that's why I'm here. As talk moves to post-lockdown plans, today's developments show it's still early days in understanding how we can better treat those who end up in hospital as the wait for a possible vaccine continues. Well, I'm joined now by Dr. Elisabetta Grappelli, who's a specialist in virology and global health at St. George's University in London. There are lots of possible treatments being explored by teams all over the world. Do you think they could end up being more significant than the wait for a vaccine? So certainly when it comes to uh, treatments, when it comes to drugs, we will have answers uh, quicker than when it comes to, to the vaccines. Because uh, the, the drugs that we are uh, trialing at the moment are, have already been developed and most of them have already been um, shown to be safe. And therefore we can put them straight uh, into, into the clinic. Vaccines, we are starting from scratch and therefore the many months, 12, 18 months still, uh, still applies. So hopefully, you know, we've already seen a quick recruitment and of patients for the trials for remdesivir all over the world and therefore uh, answers about remdesivir and other drugs that will come sooner. Now, um, you say sort of 12 to 18 months on a vaccine. A couple of days ago, Sir John Bell from Oxford told Channel 4 News that he thought it was possible they could have a mass produced vaccine for Britain by September this year. Do you understand how that's possible? Uh, uh, scientifically, um, that, that would be fantastically uh, fast. Um, I, I don't know the, the details, what magic bullets or magic manufacturing they, they might have. Um, I, I think it's, uh, uh, it's also a very, very best case scenario. And we know that in science, uh, you know, sometimes we need to do things and they don't go the way we want them. And therefore, that adds, uh, adds time. So possibly best case scenario. Uh, if it happens, great. But I think we, we also need to be uh, realistic. OK, well, let's come to testing and tracing then. I mean, whatever you think of the way the government counts, our testing capacity is now somewhere between, say, 70,000 and 120,000. Without a contact tracing system, is that still valuable? So it, it is because uh, testing serves uh, two purposes. Um, in the middle of the of the outbreak, so when we are still in the in the high numbers, like the UK has, you know, today 4,800 uh, new cases. So testing in this context tells you how much virus there is and where it is. You know, when you look at a population, when you look at a community, and also geographically, but also in which settings. And so it gives you a general idea. When those numbers to start going down, then you can uh, act on every single new positive test that you have. And that's when you can do the contact tracing. At the moment, the contact tracing is done by individuals actually asking lots of questions and that time consuming. And therefore, it certainly cannot be done when you have almost 5,000 cases a day. However, hopefully technology will, will help. But I think the numbers will still need to go down a little bit before we can have this targeted uh, test, uh, trace and isolate uh, based on testing. And so, again, I suppose that should put back our expectations of when unlock is possible, because it depends also on having contact tracing up and running. I, I think uh, it, it helps uh, to, to look into the two, three weeks uh, uh, timelines. And of course, uh, the next week at the UK government, we'll talk about uh, uh, renewing the lockdown and in what terms. And so right now, 
contact tracing is not up and running. The human contact tracers are still being uh, um, found and trained and there isn't a vaccine. We only have very uh, small um, promising data about one drug. So it's likely that, uh, you know, for the shorter term, in terms of three, four weeks, uh, we are still, you know, unfortunately, a little bit more of the same. So we all need to just hang in there.